Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing all of you the basics of using text plus elements inside of your videos for DaVinci Resolve 17. So if you're looking to create a basic title and then customize it with some settings, this is going to be the tutorial for you. So as you can see, I'm already on the edit page and I have some stock clips on the timeline. So we're going to add a title on top of that. So if you want to add a title, then you should usually put it on video track two or above. So whatever is on the highest video track is going to show on top of the lower tracks. So your video is going to be the background. And now we can right click above video track one on the timeline and do add track. So that's going to create video track two, which is going to show on top of video track one and is going to be the place we're going to put our title. So to add a text plus element, let's open up the effects window. So click effects at the top left and then you can go to titles and you'll see text plus right here. So text plus has a lot of extra options that you wouldn't have in the original text element. If you want a pre-made title, you're going to be looking more for fusion titles, but if you want to create something from scratch, text plus is going to be a good starting point for you. So I'm going to drag this onto the timeline and let's, and then let's move the timeline cursor to where we have the title and left click on the title. So in the middle of the screen, you should see the default text for your text plus. Make sure you click on text plus. And then if you have the inspector open in the top right, then you should be able to change the text that is showing inside of that box. So right here, I can type something like text plus tutorial. One thing worth pointing out is that you can hit enter if you want to create a new line. So if I type second line in here, you can have two lines of text on the same text plus element. Another alternative, if you need custom settings for each line of text would be to put another text plus element onto video track three. So to create our video track three, I could just drag text plus right onto the timeline, right above the first text plus that's on video track two, let go of that. And then right here on the new text plus, I can say custom settings. And then this would be a completely separate text Box. And then this is a completely separate text box. So if I click on font and I change it to something different, like let's just go over here and throw in a new font, then you can see we have different settings between these two. For now though, so that we can clearly talk about the original text plus, I'm just going to click on the layer three text plus, and I'm going to turn it off with this little toggle. And I'm going to turn it off with this little toggle here so we can't see it. So if we click on our original text plus here, you can see that the white color doesn't work so well against the background. So a couple options you would have in a situation like this would be to change the color of the text. So you can click on the color and then move the color wheel towards the hue you want. And then you can drag this bottom bar to the left if you want to make it brighter or to the right side if you want to darken it towards more of a solid black color. So I can make it something like orange at full brightness and hit OK. And we could say this is a little bit more readable than what we had before. So another way you can make your text readable is to go over to the shading tab and then in shading elements where it says select element, click on the drop down and change it to three. This is going to be the black shadow shading element. So if you enable this, you should see some drop shadow appear for your text. So this is great because it lets our bright colors like a white or a vivid orange contrast against the black shadow that's right behind it and kind of makes it pop out in a 3D way as well. So you can scroll down here for the settings for your drop shadow and you might want to take the softness and lower that down if you want the shadow to be less blurry and you can do that for both the X and the Y. So you would usually want that to be about the same and you can increase the glow if you want the drop shadow to kind of pop out a little bit more and help make your text even more visible. So back on the text tab, for the text plus, you can scroll down and there's other settings. So size is going to be a really common one you'd want to use. If you look at this window, you can see the text is pretty small compared to our video frame. So we can crank the size way up and that can make it better for a title screen so that, you know, when someone's actually watching the video or looking at your thumbnail, that it's going to be easy to see. If we scroll further down, there's this setting called write on. So if I take the right on end and I take that all the way to zero, it's going to make the text invisible. And if I put the right end at 1.0, but the start at 0.0, then everything is visible. So you can animate this property as a easy way to make an animation. So if I go to the starting frame of our text plus and I'm going to take the end here and I'm going to keyframe it to zero. So take the end, set it to zero. So zero, zero for start, zero, zero for end check the keyframing diamond over here. And then let's zoom in on the timeline, go about a second into the future. And now just change the end circle to be back at 1.0. And 
Now we can go to the start of our title and hit play. And then you can see the right on effect and it might take a couple times to render, but you can see how that's kind of a quick animation where you can have the text appear on the screen one letter at a time. Of course, you could combine that with other tools too. So for instance, you could animate a blur for your title if you want there to be kind of a transition there. So a quick way would be to go to video transitions and then drag a transition onto your text clips in the same way you would for your video clip. So for instance, I can take a blur dissolve and drag it onto the start here for this text plus element. Let's drop it there. So if we go to the start here and hit play, we can see the blur dissolve kind of adds to the text appearing on the screen. If we scroll through it, you can still see the text is still appearing with that right on effect. If we turned off the right on effect, let's just go ahead and remove the keyframing. Then it would look more like this. To make a point about how you can use any video effects on your text plus elements in the same way as your video clips, let's go down to open effects for a minute. And I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom to find something we could use, such as one of the warp effects. So I'll use this to create something of a end transition out. So I'll drag, let's say vortex and let's add it on to the text here. So by default, this is going to apply to everything across the clip. But if we choose a starting point where it has no strength, like right here, we use this for our keyframing point and we go over to effects, then we can take the size and make that zero. So there's no vortex yet. And then we keyframe. So this will be the starting point of creating a vortex animation. And let's go to the end frame here or one frame before so we can see it. And let's increase the size of our vortex. Let's just make it 2.0, cranking it all the way up. Go here, hit play. And then we can see the vortex spin as it animates our text. So we could do that with multiple properties. Maybe I add angle and power and swirl in here. Let's just change all of this stuff. And then let's go to the second keyframe on the size and then we'll adjust this swirl here as well so it actually looks more like a real vortex so let's go back in time and the timeline hit play there's kind of our vortex so if we wanted to combine that with something else we could just fade out our text using the white notch so on our text plus clip you can click up here in the top right and i'm going to drag this outwards about 30 frames one second in our video hit space and now when the vortex happens, it's also going to be fading out at the same time. So just an example of what you can do with your text plus elements, even though they're not a fusion title, they haven't been pre-made. And at this point, you're not even using the fusion page, which can allow you to add extra nodes for doing these kind of effects as well. So let's see if we go back to the video tab of our text plus, let's talk about the layout tab. So in layout, we can see point and then center X and center Y. So we can press and hold on these properties if we want to change the settings on the screen, move the text around. And that's something you could animate with the keyframe diamond as well. Another way you can do it is if you click over here in the bottom left of your preview window, and then I'm going to want to go to fusion overlay. Then this is going to give you some gizmos that you can use to control the position and the rotation of your text. So if you click on the left, right arrows, you can move the text. You can see this adjusts the point property in uh, the same way as dragging in the inspector. And you can rotate the text with this outside wheel. So you can adjust the position and the rotation pretty easily like that. The rotation settings down here in X, Y, Z. Since using the text plus is generally just gonna be a 2D effect, Z is the property that you're gonna be generally looking to actually change here. So if you were messing with the X rotation, that would lean it back. And then the Y rotation would be turning it away from the camera. You could combine these rotations if you want the text to be kind of slanted against the camera instead of front facing. You may also want your text to follow a circle or a path shape. So if you change the type and layout from point to circle, then it's going to be going around here. So we can adjust the size of the circle. So this is going to have the text go around our center point here. If you want to bring the text in, you can use center Z in order to do that, or you could adjust the size. So the path layout is kind of interesting because your text is going to follow the path you set around the screen. Uh, let's go back to the text tab, and I'm actually going to move this onto one line of text. So text tutorial to second line, but now it's all on one line actually. Uh, just to demo this because this will make the path work better. Uh, now on the layout tab, I'm going to make sure that I am in fusion overlay with this drop down, and then you can left click to add a path point. So you can see that each path point has left and right bezier curve handles on each side, just like you would if you were creating a path in GIMP or Photoshop. 
you don't have to use the Bezier curve handles, but if you don't, then the line between each path point is going to be straight. If you do use the curve handles, it's going to manipulate the path between the points. So if I left click, I'm going to add another point and you can see the text starts to follow the line. I'm going to left click add another point and another point here. You can right click on the screen, go to template path to see all of the hotkeys for your path. So shift C is going to be click append and you can shift N to done and you can hit backspace if you want to delete points. So you can move the curve handles around the screen to determine where the text is going to show. I'm going to hit shift M to go to modify mode and now I can click on each point and adjust the curve handles. So you can see if you pull out the best of your curves, it's going to be controlling where the text is going to show. So the text tries to follow the path as best as it can. I'll click on this point and move the right curve down here and this curve up. And you can see how the curves on either side of the point affect each other. So if I use this curve and I adjust it kind of like this, it's actually going to be affecting the other points as well. So keep that in mind when you're playing around with your curves. So there's quite a bit you can do with the path tools, but that's a quick look at that. On the transform tab, you can control settings about your title on a different basis for characters, words, and lines. So characters, you're talking about each letter. Words would be, well, kind of obviously, each separate word separated by a space. And then lines, whenever you create a new enter space to add a second line, that's what you would be talking about there. So on transform, if I go to lines, we can increase the spacing between lines like this. And uh, let's actually go back to layout and then let's change the layout type to point. That'll just be easier to see what we're doing here. So you can increase the spacing between lines if you want. The settings down here for rotation, shear, and size are going to apply to everything. Note that transform is only for these settings up here. So if we rotate, we're actually rotating the entire text element all at once. If we apply shear to have the characters be slanted, you'll see each character is affected. And then size, just another way we can increase or decrease the size of our text. As you can see, there's probably four or five ways you can do that. And uh, we can also go back to transform and do words. So if we want to increase the spacing between words, that's where this drop down matters. Or if we do transform characters, you can space out your characters if you want. And that could be an uh, interesting animation. So imagine something like this, a lot of spacing, and then you crimp it all together for it to actually show the text after one second. I could actually just show that real quick. So let's add a, another text plus over here real quick. I'll go to transform and let's keyframe the transform for characters to 4.0 right here. Go about a second in, drop it back down to 1.0. And then if I hit space, here you have another little animation. And you could combine that with the white notch trick, which just adjusts the opacity over time. So 30 seconds for that. And you have both fading in and the characters coming together in one effect. So aside from all that, it's worth pointing out, you can also go to the settings tab over here. So you have the title settings and then you have the settings for the video clip. And you'll see that these are the same as if you clicked on the background clip. So if you want to adjust the zoom on a text title, kind of controlling how big it looks to the camera, the position, rotating it here, um, just another way you can rotate. Or if you want to use some cropping, you can do all these same settings the same way as a normal video clip. So just keep that in mind that you have those options. So before we wrap up the video, I want to point out that with a text plus node, or even if you just want to build on top of an underlying video clip and add a text plus node on the fusion page, then you can use the text plus node as a building block for something greater. So your basic title settings, you have a lot of options with text plus. You can click on your text plus node and go over to the fusion page. If you want to see your text plus node over here as a template, if you hover over it, you can see it says text plus. So a text plus node is just one of many nodes you have on the fusion page. So if I click text plus, this is functionally the same as this down here. So you can customize all the settings here that you could with this. And you could actually have just taken the underlying base video clip, the background clip, and gone over to the Fusion page in order to add a text plus without actually having a video track too, though that's a little bit more involved. So what I really want to point out here is that for all the Fusion titles, they often use a text plus node as the basis for creating more complicated effects. So if I go back over to the edit page and I take one of these Fusion titles onto the timeline, like uh, let's say this jitter here, I'll drag it over here 
And then we can click on the fusion title, the jitter. If we are on the title tab, then you'll see a jump to fusion page for that fusion title. So if I do that and we double click on jitter, the node group, you'll see this node group in order to create the fancy fusion effect is actually composed of a whole bunch of different nodes. So here you have your text plus node right here, but you can see combined with one or two text plus nodes, you have other nodes that actually add to it in creating a more fancy effect. So if we show the jitter title, this is something that would be pretty hard to do with just a text plus node. But if you actually learn more about the fusion editor, then you can go and create more advanced titles. So I don't want to get into that in this video, but I did want to just show real quick that a text plus node is kind of your starting place for DaVinci Resolve. You really don't need to use the fusion node editor until you're looking at creating something a bit more fancy. But when you're ready to try that out, I have a whole bunch of tutorials on my channel about creating effects on the fusion page and using the text plus node as a building block for title effects as well. So that's going to be it for this video, creating some basic title effects using text plus title inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope this was helpful for all of you out there. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I've been Chris and I will see all of you in my future video content.